Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bit of a mess here this morning. I apologize for that. Amen. Sometimes, you know, like I've said before, and I'll say it to you again, amen, Jesus. I do not like giving the impression of some sort of holier-than-thou person. And I would prefer to have you see me as a regular person. Because <laughs> that's all we really are, regular people. Being led by the Spirit of God. Everything else is divinely manifested through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, period. And what Paul said, I am that I am by the grace of God. That's who we are. And we receive each other that way. Not to look at each other in the flesh, but to judge one another, discern among one another through the Spirit of Christ. I had a couple of things I wanted to share with you this morning. I don't care what the attacks of the devil might be or the efforts that, you know, whatever it is, it just, it just doesn't matter. And I'm talking about, for me personally, like in my, uh, during my, my dreams, or um, where I might feel exasperated regarding the period of time I've been here and waiting upon the Lord and what I'm hoping and praying by faith and believing by faith is about to take place, when it shall actually take place, and then I can actually have that anointing, we can have the anointing upon us, and then we can start to... Do what it is the Lord would have us to do in this end time. Regardless of all of that, it just doesn't make any difference because what I've been sharing with you is the life I'm living. That's <laughs> I can't change that. I cannot change what took place 38 years ago. I can't deny that it took place. Nor can I deny any other aspect of that walk of faith speaking in tongues, the dreams, the visions, anything. I can't deny any of it. And because of it, I cannot say to you anything other than those things which I have come to understand to be the truth. Which brings me into the fact that many of you may not know how important it is regarding taking captive every thought to the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is the will of the Father. So every thought, okay, that I might be dealing with or that the Holy Spirit might bring to my mind regarding those who are watching these videos. So you will notice, and when I share on someone else's video, <clears throat> it's the thoughts that we're taking captive taking captive every thought to the obedience, okay, to the mind of Christ. Every thought. So e even what you're thinking, it, and I know some of you might say, well, how do you know what I'm... I, for those of you who have matured in the Spirit through the, through the use of discernment over the years, I know you know that you can sense what a person is thinking by what they're saying. I can. So when they're sharing on these videos, how they're sharing what they're sharing helps me to discern okay, Test the spirits to see if they be of God. How would you test the spirits to see if they be uh, of God? And how would you know when you do test the spirits to see if they be of God? How would you be able to discern unless you had been practiced in the use of that discernment? So, I mean, you just don't do these things willy-nilly without there being a reason for them and an outcome which is favorable, which helps us to understand the perfect will of the Father. All of these things have to work together in harmony, all right, 
or they're totally worthless, useless. They, they're of no effect. I don't serve a God <laughs> of no effect. I don't serve a God of uh, uh, willy-nilly. My, my God is established, ordered, okay? And I'm to come into obedience to that established order and be led by His Spirit to do what He would have me to do the way He would have me to do it. Not leaning upon my own understanding. And how do we not lean upon our own understanding? By studying the Word of God and gaining the understanding of which is written in the Word of God by God so that we can have the mind of Christ, the will of the Father in us, working through us, leading us, guiding us. So now that we no longer stand upon our own understanding, which we did prior to coming into the, the Word, and prior to the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we now stand upon the Word of God as our understanding. So I don't, I don't use my own thinking about things. If I hear something being said to me, immediately the Holy Spirit brings to mind scriptures related to the conversation. And that's how I discern what it is and say what it is that I say by the leading of the Holy Spirit in the scriptures that he brings to mind at the time that I'm listening to someone else's video. So, I was mentioned to you a few days ago here about this sister, uh, yeah, I'm going to forget her name now, just came out here with the uh, the Bride Clark, I think it is. Cheryl Clark, something like that. I'm not sure what her name is. I might have two sisters mixed up. <laughs> one that I'm emailing right now, talking to, and, and this one. But anyway, <coughs> well, okay. Here, here's an example. All right, praise God. Now, I will make a couple, I've made a couple, two, three comments, and for those of you who have gone to this particular video and if you have seen my comments there you'll know the comments that I've made alright and testing the spirit okay one of the tests of the spirits is this reproof correction admonition exhortation okay and rebuke if need be so if I do not agree with a certain aspect of someone's video I will offer reproof, uh, as I did in the first comment that I made to her regarding the John ministry, which I don't agree with. Okay, I believe John is representative of the lesser light that came prior to the greater light, Jesus Christ. That those who are still in John's ministry are among those who are babes, still drinking the milk of the word of God, the call to repentance that they have yet to have received the baptism of the Spirit. I believe in the priesthood of the inner court, those who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that among the priesthood in the inner court, as the sons of Zadok, there were the faithful and unfaithful priests, the obedient and the disobedient. And it was among the obedient, not all of the obedient, but among the obedient priests who laid down their lives in this life after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and entered in through the veil of flesh into the Holy of Holies and have become the priest of God according to the order of Melchizedek. They're the sons and daughters of God. They are the rulers who will rule as kings and priests with Jesus on earth. And since it's my belief that Jesus returns prior to everybody seeing him in the clouds and the, with the literal man, that he comes during this period of darkness to restore the church, which to me is establishing the kingdom of heaven here on earth, which is heavenly Jerusalem coming down okay, spiritually, then the, my belief is that the sons and daughters now take their place as those kings and priests 
by faith and that all authority the same authority that was given to Jesus as the first son is given to the sons and daughters who have come after him in a like manner stones shoot out of the mountain of God as he was the cornerstone okay being established upon that foundation of the revealed word bedrock of the revealed word of the father of which the foundation cornerstone and all sits upon all right and that they are these stones that are the walls now being placed upon the foundation that was established 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> that they will rule and reign with them spiritually right here, right now, very soon. That this is that company of men, the man-child, who have, are going to be given authority over the enemy in this end time. <clears throat> so... For those of you who do not are not able to see beyond this period of time into the rule and reign of Jesus Christ as the Lord of Lord and King of Kings during this thousand year rule and reign of which he is the Lord of that Sabbath rest, rest the true Sabbath rest of that thousand years, the seventh day, which I just shared with you about that uh, vineyard owner clock. Okay. If you're not able to see beyond to that period of time and understand everything that might that will take place regarding okay those issues pertaining to the household of faith I just want to assure you that we walk in faith believing in that which we cannot see this is the entering in and the faith of which he's looking for that those at this hour who will enter in by faith, not seeing it, but believing by faith, are they who will come under the anointed covering of the sons and daughters at this hour, having authority over the house of God. You will have to enter in by faith under that covering of that son and daughter spread throughout the entire world, or you will not be protected out of what is about to come upon this earth. They are here for your safeguard. They are here for many different reasons. They are not going to just let everybody and this brother walk in here. That's just not the way it works. This stick cleansing, this sister was talking about the spirit of Elijah, so I... Shared a little bit of the spirit of Elijah with her. <laughs> Test the spirit. See if they be of God. So far, it doesn't look good. And I've been sharing with another sister of mine and through emails. And, you know, I've, I've explained to her. I've left uh, other messages. This other sister, unfortunately, uh, it has some uh, that I'm emailing. Has some... Uh, physical limitations. I know it's her heart, okay, and her and her mind when it's clear. Okay. She's an obedient daughter of God. I I have no doubt that she is very much a, a sister in the Lord. But these disabilities, these uh, uh, infirmities that she has at this hour uh, keep her from um Spending more time uh, visiting the videos that I've shared, that I've shared, and really getting more involved in the ministry that's being offered at this hour. She has her own work that she's been led in the spirit to do, and and I'm going to do everything I can to be an example to her, because I wrote back to her and explained to her, Amen, Jesus. I, I a lot of this week's uh, testimony uh, has been. Not just for others, but for her in particular. Um, I wanted to put it all together in a short period of time for you guys and those who have yet to have come to understand just exactly what all this has been about. Okay, And for her especially, 
so that she would uh, be able to begin to understand uh, what is in my heart and soul uh, regarding the faith. But unfortunately, <laughs> I just found out that uh, she, didn't, she hasn't, uh, hasn't really uh, visited any of the videos all this week. <laughs> Amen, Jesus. So I, I just pray that perhaps she does. And, and uh, I don't know. There's just, uh, I, I want to tell you, amen, Jesus, I, I believe I ran into Reuben. And the truth of the fact is, the brother's name was Reuben. <laughs> okay? And I have this thing going on in the back of my mind about Joseph and Reuben. What that's about, I don't know. And I also had something else given to me about Leah and Rachel. And I think I mentioned that before. And uh, I told you because I believe that what was written in the Old Testament is the reflection is the types are the reflection of the heavenly vision which was given to Daniel as the design for the temple and everything else involved in the natural temple in that design built by Solomon is a type of those things that would that are the body of Christ as the temple and that if you'll look at them, you'll see us in those instruments and the loaves of bread and everything that has to do with it is such a glorious, wonderful thing to, to finally see the beauty of the body of Christ through the types of the temple that was established that you will just get so filled up with the Holy Spirit, you, you just will not be able to contain yourself. So along with that, I, and, I, and the word is shared with us, the types of Sarah and Hagar, and I keep going back over this over and over again, it goes right back to Jonah and the eight, newness of life and the three levels. <coughs> There's so much in there for everybody. If you'll just let go and let God and start to hear with your hearts and see with your hearts and leave your minds out of it. Let the Spirit lead you when you read these things. Anyway, uh, seven years for Leah and seven years for Rachel, and I'm just kind of back and tracking now because I, I realize there's some, some significance to that regarding my first coming back out of where I was at through my death and then my resurrection, this resurrected period of time of my life as a son over the house. And then I liken that to the seven years that, the first seven years that Jacob served Leban uh, in, in bondage, more or less. Okay? Which is kind of like the natural man. In, Jacob, the inner man, being in bondage for another seven years to the outer man. Uh, him thinking it's for Rachel, but turned out it was you know, <coughs> the older sister had to be married according to their customs first before the younger sister uh, daughter could be. And I'm seeing that as uh, uh, you see that for all, about five years that I worked for uh, Rob and I was explaining to you when I first came back and then actually prior to uh, uh, my going to work for Rob and coming from back from uh, uh, here I was two years so that's seven years the two years prior to my going to work for Rob and then five years at work okay and then the end comes and so now we're into another seven year period because Jacob had to serve another seven years what in this in this body praise God for uh, Rachel and Rachel is a picture of the bride of Christ, the church. I know I've mentioned Rebecca before, and Sarah as a heavenly Jerusalem and Rebecca. I I, I want to look at that again in that relationship to Isaac and Rebecca. I believe it's Isaac was married to Rebecca and, and Jacob to Rachel. Uh, 
I want to look at that more closely and and so maybe some of you guys will start to read up on that okay because this is where we get this the mirrored reflection from for those of you who are questioning what that mirrored reflection was that Paul was referring to these are these are the types he offered okay so you got to kind of connect the dots he, he's in one verse referring to okay the mystery being unveiled Okay, which was more than just Christ crucified. That's the door that opened up that the mystery of God might be unveiled. Amen, Jesus. And then he goes on to show examples of Sarah and Hagar and Isaac and uh, being put upon the altar and everything. Okay, he's giving us, but you've got to connect the dots. Okay, why is he giving us these examples and talking about the mirrored reflection? There's got to be a connection between the two. And the revelation, because you read on further in the Word of God, that it's in the revelation of the body of Christ. Not the book of Revelation, but in the revelation of the body of Christ, which is what? The temple. Okay. And the journey and the walk of faith. It's in that revelation, in the revealing of these types. Okay. As they reflect the heavenly here on earth, that we might see them, okay, that we will have ultimately have our deliverance from these bodies of death. It's the revelation of what you're about to come into under the covering of the sons and daughters of God that we sit at this table to feast at. This is what we're coming into, which is going to transform us from mortal and mortal beings. And or catch us up into a spiritual realm outside of this realm for a period of time until the indignation and wrath of God passes by and all of that has been brought to an end alright and then I believe that the faithful come back out of that ark barn covering and God says to each of you where have all your enemies gone because he's gotten rid of them all they're gone <laughs> amen Jesus there's no more spirit of darkness out here. A man is blessed for his offerings to God. And you're free to just love God and love your brother and to care for one another as God has always meant for us to live with one another. Not about what you make and all of that stuff. What good is all of that if there are people in the world who are still starving and people in the world who are still under oppression and suffering? What good is all that? How, how can anyone have wealth and, and, and live in a world like that? I, that's why I'm broke. <laughs> I, I would just as soon not have it until we can all have it. And then when we can all have it, I'd be more than happy to help everybody equally distribute the blessings among all of them who are here so that none have lack which is the kingdom of heaven here on earth and that's what's getting ready to take place you got to go through this period of time for the sake of the salvation of as many souls as possible that's what this is all about the trying the testing and the coming and then along with that the judgments that come upon the the whore and harlot church a double portion is given to her and then the man taking his place as man in defiance of God. That's the bottom line, folks. The bottom line is the true nature of man is the beast of which he is that rises up out of the sea <laughs> in his one world government, all right, defying God. So God turns man upon himself because that's what's in man. He lets him do what he wants to do to become this ruler. And in the process of it, the rebellion that's in man, because, <laughs> yeah, one world government long enough to get the finances back on top, okay, but if you think any of these folks out here who's led by the spirit of man and the spirit of darkness is going to continue to allow someone else to rule over them, you're sadly mistaken. 
<laughs> they're mad. And that's why they end up beginning to destroy one another because whatever truce and alliance they have long enough to get them, okay, out of the financial mess that they're in and to bring some sense of peace and security, okay, to the world, all right, and to natural Israel, ultimately they break that truce among one another and with Israel. And as a result of that, they begin to destroy one another. But we're out of here by that, I mean, by that time. And I, I, I firmly believe that the martyrs from the natural remnant have already, and I've, I've mentioned to you, it's my belief that there's 7,000 of them, that they're the remaining remnant, okay, of most of uh, the tribe, tribes of natural Israel, that sea, that have already been taken up and, are in paradise and are seen in the kingdom of heaven, all right, spiritually, by faith, among the 144,000 of the natural seed. That they're just the remnant, the balance of the natural seed that ends up being in the kingdom of heaven, as we've discussed before, because it's my belief that Esau, as the elder brother, okay, uh, sold his birthright. That's what took place. Many people don't want to accept that, but in the Word of God it says that uh, the eunuchs, okay, whose names were written upon the pillars of God's house, obtained a greater name than the sons and daughters, okay, and he's making reference to the natural seed, sons and daughters that these units, which I believe, are the true virgin births, spiritually, who have never prostituted themselves nor come under man's teachings. But from the very beginning, they received that baptism of the Holy Spirit and were led and taught by Jesus and never, ever, came out from underneath that cover. So, <clears throat> immortality to me is the birthright that natural Israel sold. Um, now, if that's true, it's not true. It's neither here nor there, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. I only mention it to help you to clarify in your own minds that there is an order and an understanding and a wisdom and knowledge of which God in his love for us has preordained and set in place according to his will, not ours. It's our accepting God's will as that ultimate authority in our lives that we become submitted and obedient servants to that is ultimately going to be the question that takes place before you and God and the judgment seat of, of, of Christ. Did you or did you not receive and accept and obey the will of the Father? Period. End of story. Done. Not did you do it perfectly, not that blah, 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 all of that other stuff. God understands the weaknesses and the infirmities. He's got all that covered. There isn't, you know, nobody that hasn't sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. The essence of the intent of your heart and your desire to do the will of the Father is what's at issue. And that's what you will be judged by. Even under the blood, <laughs> the degree of faith, I mean, yes, the sins are all forgiven, but the idea that you're not going to be judged according to what you did or did not do on this earth, okay, is a non-issue. It's the law. We have to be. Okay? That's it. We pass out from underneath the judgments, the consequences of it. Amen, Jesus. But the idea that you're not going to be affected in your natural walk here on earth through the chastisements and, and scourgings that you receive, here on earth before this all comes about, okay, 
so that that cleansing takes place and the sanctifi- sanctification takes place. I mean, these are all the issues of which why, under the blood of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven because we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in this life to let that transformation take place from within. But if you haven't, then that work has to continue. And this is what I'm trying to refer to you when I say to you that I believe it's the children of God, the meek who inherit the earth, this earth that has, okay, now under the rule and reign of Jesus, amen, okay, who will be bringing the grain offering up to the house of the Lord, and that man, who up until that point has not, will then say to them, let us go up to (laughs) your God, okay, uh, and make this offering. So they, they gather man together, and they go up to the temple together in that area. There's going to be areas, households of God throughout the entire earth, of whom the sons and daughters rule, in that particular area. This is my area. So what is it? 795,000. That ain't many compared to the entire area of the people that surround here. But, you know, man will have almost completely destroyed himself. Now the number of, uh, of those who are in the kingdom of heaven and those... Uh, you know, who, who are not going to be here during this period of time. They don't come back up. I don't believe. <laughs> There's a lot to be talked about, about the dead in Christ who rise first and that they're caught up with us and whether or not they actually return to the earth. Okay? Because the 30, 60, and 100 fold have been around since the beginning of the church. <coughs> and the 30, 60, and 100 fold receive the same reward as a 30, 60, 100 fold believer from the very beginning of the church as those who are at the end. Okay? The reward's the same for the 30, 60, and 100 fold, regardless of how soon in the day they came in. So if the 30 fold's reward is to be as the angels of God in heaven beholding the face of God eternally, then the 30-fold from 2,000 years ago are going to get the same reward. And if the 60-fold's reward, as I believe, because of their faith as Judah, okay, although more treacherous than Israel, faithless Israel is like the 30-fold. All right? had not the faith to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, their eyes were not opened. But Judah, okay, that warrior, David, the armor, is a picture of them who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, entered into the inner court in this life, and their reward, when the time comes, I believe, is the fact that they, by faith, have had the, their souls redeemed through the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this life, and their reward is the eternal in the new heaven and the new earth that comes after this thousand year rule and reign. Paradise. The new heaven, the new earth. <clears throat> and the hundredfold from 2,000 years ago, right on up to this period of time, amen, are the 144,000 sons and daughters of God who will receive immortal bodies when they're raised up out of the dead, from the dead. Amen? They're the only ones, I believe, that are going to be here on earth. I don't, you know, when we're in prayer before the Lord and we are discerning in the Spirit, there are things that are given to us and things that are not, things that we can understand. And I will share with you again and again and again Everything that you discern in the Spirit must be witnessed to by the Word of God. There's got to be a connection. So, you know, God don't hate you or mad at you because you discern in the Spirit and share like I've been sharing, okay, 
without absolutely having a hundred percent witness and testimony that all oh, this is the word of God and blah 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 blah. No. How do you <laughs> yeah. digging <laughs> spiritually is to what? Explore. You dig to explore. To find the pearls of wisdom. So spiritually, I'm digging. I'm digging away at this. You know, what was that one dream I had? I, I, you know, I'm digging down and up. And what it is is I, I find all this money. Well, they're like, I don't know, forty thousand dollar packages of money, and I'm just throwing them up in a pile. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, Father God, I have got to be the the single craziest brother on YouTube. <laughs> Amen. That's how I think I sound sometimes. That guy's really lost his mind. He's digging piles of money up out of him. <laughs> the wealth, treasures, kingdom of heaven. Put them up, kingdom of heaven. Well, praise God, the Lord be with you and bless you. I probably was going to talk about two or three different things and didn't say anything about nothing. And had a kind of a disturbing dream about throwing this great big pile of, I don't know, it looked like a great big chicken. The flesh. And I'm, and I'm thinking, of my, and there was a rabbit up there on top of that pile of chicken legs. Of course, I had had chicken the other night just before I went to bed last night. So that might have had something to do with it. You got to watch out for those things. I told you, they just, they, they can affect your dreams and you can get all disemboggled, okay? But I was just throwing these legs, chicken legs, and wings, okay, up on this pile. And one of them that I threw up way up there, I, that's where I saw that little rabbit jumping around. I don't know, now you see, but, uh, geez, I was going to, you know, I, I thought about asterisk, the asterisk pole here, which was a part of, oh my God, the flesh, and what I had to deal with, which was a dream I had years ago about this pole, and I was sitting way up, up at the top of this pole, and I came to find out it was the asterisk pole, because I was a serious worshiper of the flesh, of the lust of the flesh. I was right. And God came along and bowled that bow, that right down to the ground, amen, and the seat that I was on, and I got right off of it, and it went right back up. God bowled that bow, bowed that asterisk, pulled right on down so I could get off of that seat. And thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. You have no idea what... <laughs> yeah, no idea. So anyway, um, what that dream was all about, I have no idea either. So praise God, Amen. I love you guys. Oh yeah, Reuben. Oh, Reuben. I want to tell you real quick. I ran into him at the bus stop. His, his name is Reuben, but you know, when I heard that name, I. We had such a, just a few seconds just before the bus came, maybe a minute or two, and he was telling me about how his uh, girlfriend, uh, he, when he would come over to visit or something, he didn't like, she had a picture of St. Jude. Now, in this area, there's a strong Catholic influence, okay, among the Mexican people, which is part of the reason why I'm out here, because I have been given an innate love for the uh, Mexican people and connect that with the leading of the Spirit of God, then you'll get a picture of the work that I believe I'm going to be involved in. Okay. Anyway, um, this brother, he's a young man, and he says, that picture bothered me. Now, his thinking behind it as being St. Jude, he confused with being Judas Iscariot. But I don't, and I explained to him, I don't think that was the problem. Because I, I, he, he called himself religious, and I said, Brother, I don't believe you're religious. 
I believe you're spiritual. And I wish I'd have had a few more minutes to explain to him what I really believed was going on. But we did share a little bit about things being in the house that were religious icons either to another uh, faith and or people in religious thoughts, formalities, the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, amen, Jesus, who have crosses and pictures of Jesus hanging up. I mean, if you ever watch Count Dracula and they're having this cross and the garlic, okay, it's, it's, it's witchcraft. The whole thing is witchcraft. They try to convince you that it's the light of God with the crosses warding off the devil when the you know, whole thing is the devil. They take you in by causing you to believe that the cross is God when it's not. It's not representing God. It's representing religion. Because right along with the cross, what do they got? The garlic. Now, unless you guys honestly think garlic wards off devils, <laughs> then the combination of those things have to show to you that they're like lucky charms. They're good luck pieces. They wear crosses because they think as a religious formality, it's going to bring them blessings that they're protected by the cross or going around and making a sign of the cross when they go by their temples. Those religious buildings. It's all a form of godliness, and that's what was really bothering that brother. But he's my brother. He's my younger brother. He's Reuben. I think it is, isn't it, Reuben? Joseph? Reuben? I'll have to check. I might have it wrong. I love you guys. Lord, we're with you and blessing Yeshua's name. Amen.